Yo, 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 what is up? We are back. So today we're working on our first rudiment, right? So hopefully you guys got some good information out of the, the grip tutorial. And now we're going to start putting some of that stuff in use, right? So this first rudiment is my favorite rudiment of all time. When you take a look at like my logo, even the logo, my Flam Man logo um, is there. And you can kind of see him like winking at everybody, peeking out from behind the Steve C graphics so of all time, right? It's so simple, but it's so fun to play. It feels really good on the hand. There's so much other stuff that's built around this particular rudiment. So um, later on, we'll get into these things called hybrid rudiments where we're taking like various rudiments and putting them together to create new rudiments. Um, and this one is absolutely fundamental to that. And this actually applies to a lot of different rudiments that um, they're named very specifically because of the way they sound when they're played, okay? So when we're playing a flam, depending on your interpretation of the flam, will depend on kind of how you pronounce it, right? So a lot of people will pronounce it flam, which is a real tight like a uh, um, interpretation of it, or flam, where they put a little more emphasis on the fa part of it. Um, or if you know you're a Remo guy and you use you know those heads, the, the Remo flam heads, you know they call them flam or phalam. Um, so it really just kind of depends on your interpretation and how you're actually going to place and line up that grace note with the stroke um, to be able to create a, a good sounding flam. Okay. A lot of times we're thinking about flams, we're thinking about two different parts of this particular rudiment. So the flam rudiment consists of a low stroke or a tap or grace note, okay, and a rebound stroke or a full or a control stroke, okay? The first thing we're gonna talk about, like I said, a grace note, okay? And a grace note is gonna be a tap, okay? And our taps are typically gonna be in the one, three, six inch range, depending on our musical dynamic, okay? I personally, when I'm playing flams, I like to keep them in the one to three inch range because I think it's visually more appealing um, to keep your taps and your flams down nice and low, okay? So left hand is gonna create that tap from the one inch, okay? While the right hand is gonna be doing what we call a control stroke or a full stroke or a rebound stroke, okay? And what that's gonna look like is that's gonna be from the six, nine, or 12th position, okay? And we're going to drop the two of them together at the same time. Okay. And when we drop both of them simultaneously at the same time, gravity does the rest of the work for us. Okay. And when we drop two things at the same time from different heights, they fall at the same rate of speed. So what happens is they're going to hit the playing surface at different times because they were dropped from different heights. Okay. And that's what gives us that phalam sound. Phalam, 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 right? So when we're dropping them together, dropping them together from the same time from different heights, that's what gives us that little two beat right there. So that grace note typically is gonna fall right before the actual downbeat. So if we're playing this to a met, that's 100 BPM right there, right? So each one of those quarters, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's where you would want that right hand to be. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, flam, 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 flam. So we're playing just right hand flams, that's the way that would look, okay? So again, two different heights, and we want to make sure that it's called a rebound stroke because when we do that, we're letting the stick come back up to its original initiated position. One of the exercises that you can play to work on these is uh, I'm gonna put a link to it for you, um, so you'll have a link to that and be able to play along to some of these uh, these, these exercises. Um, and basically, what we're looking for is quality of sound and the two different heights. Okay, so we're playing all right hands, all left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, so that's one of the little exercises and stuff that I'm gonna link here for you, and. Uh, so check that out, work on that and everything, and go from there, okay? Now, that being said, when you get into those hand-to-hand -hand flams, right? We're playing those right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right? We're alternating right-hand flam, left-hand flam, right-hand flam, left-hand flam. When we're doing that, one way to really think about um, playing these with a good quality of sound and committing these to muscle memory is to play various exercises and stuff, okay? And Typically, um, when we're working with the drum line, we have a lot of exercises that we play to work on, like our legato strokes, and our two height strokes, 
and our various like controls and our diddles and all these things. Um, and in one of the really, really common exercises that every drum line in the entire world probably is called bucks. Okay, and it's an accent tap type of a, of a exercise. Um, sometimes it's called bucks, sometimes it's called buck of dicks, uh, sometimes it's called accent taps. Various, various uh, names for it and everything. But it's simply playing accents and taps in order to really develop those two heights that we're talking about, the accent, the full stroke, and that tap, okay? And you can use that exercise to really help develop your hand-to-hand -hand flams, okay? And what I mean by that is that when we're playing those, one and two and three and four and, okay? That's the basic bucks pattern, like it's a check pattern, right? We're playing an accent on the downbeat and a tap on the and of each beat, okay? Um, doing that, that actually is going to help us with the hand-to-hand -hand flams. So what we want to do is play those accents, one and two and three and four and, and then on the left hand, you want to play the tap and then the accent. So one and two and three and four and, and when you put the two of them together, So isolating the hands is actually a really great way to really, really dial in that muscle memory so that you can really focus on the quality of sound of those particular rudiments, okay? Think not just about the flam being a rudiment, but think about the building blocks that go into even creating that particular flam, right? So you want to start with this one little tiny building block and build on that and build on that and build on that so you have something awesome. Now, that being said, take that flam, we can start adding more to that flam, like I said, building blocks, more to that flam so we can develop other flam-based rudiments, okay? So the next one we're gonna work on is gonna be called the flam tap, right? So we were already talking about full strokes and those grace note or tap strokes. So now we're gonna add another tap to the particular flam, okay? So when we're doing this, we play a flam, right hand flam, and then we're gonna play a right hand tap that is the same as the grace note, okay? So we're gonna have that one to three inch there, six to 12 there, play that as a flam. And then instead of letting the stick bounce back up to the rebound spot, we're gonna catch with our back fingers using a little bit of a back fulcrum and we're gonna catch and pull the stick back down. Okay, and in doing that, that creates that second little note, that tap. Okay. So you got your grace note, full stroke, and then a tap, okay? And then we'll play the same thing on the left hand. Okay, so when we put them together, it looks like bam, tap, 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 bam, tap. Same thing applies though. We can still isolate the hands in order to create patterns that will help us work on that, okay? But when we're playing a triple in this case, which is three points of contact from one um, toss of the stick, right? So three strokes from one actual movement of the stick. Okay, so when we're doing that, that gives us those three strokes that we need to really develop the quality of sound for the flam tap, okay? So it's gonna be an accented first partial, and then two taps. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and, okay? Left hand can be played the same way. One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and. Now, the way I like to do it is to actually break down exactly what the hands are doing, okay? So we're playing these flam taps. One E and, three E and, three E and, four E and, okay? One E and, two E and, three E and, four E and, right? So what happens is the left hand's not actually playing the one E and, it's not, it's actually playing one and a two, and a three, and a four, and a, okay? So if we play it that way, it gives us a little bit more of a realistic approach to what is actually happening with the left hand when we're playing these flam tap rhythms, okay? So what I like to do is play a, uh, an exercise that starts with those triple strokes, but it's also got them on the left, but we're putting the accent in the right spot, okay? So it would look something like this.
put the two hands together, you get that nice clean flam tap with nice good heights and, uh, and a fully developed like a, a control stroke. Okay, so those are flam taps, <clears throat> which are a lot of fun. You can use them all around the drum set. Uh, there's a lot of really cool applications and stuff for them. Now the uh, this next one is hands down my favorite to play. Okay. Um, it's called Flam Accent, and I love this one because it's actually triplet based. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen me post um, comments on some of your videos um, in regards to like, you know, tripletized fills and stuff like that. I love triplets, okay? Maybe it's just the jazz guy in me, I don't know, but I love them. And the really, really cool thing about playing Flam Accents in a tripletized context like this is um, it really forces you to work both hands simultaneously um, because the nature of a triplet being three strokes forces you to play from right to left to right to left, okay? And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we have our Met set to 100 BPM, okay? And we're playing one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If we were to tripletize that, we'd be thinking triple it, 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 triple it. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, okay? So we're playing triplets, it automatically forces us hand to hand to really work on that, right? So let's break down the, the flam accent, okay? So we're gonna start with that same thing, flam. Got that nice little grace note and a full stroke, right? Okay, right? And then it's gonna be followed by a left hand tap and then a right hand tap. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, okay? And then that's gonna force us to the left. Left, right, left. So we put them together, right? Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. So we put that to the mat. Okay, so we really, really want to focus that emphasis on playing nice and smooth in time, keeping the subdivision of that triplet nice and even, tri even though I was rushing a little bit. Triple it, 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 triple it. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So same thing, we have exercises that we can do that can isolate the hand and see what each hand is doing so we can really, really dive into what each hand is doing so we can work on that muscle memory, right? So this particular one, it's a lot of fun. It's actually got this little swing pattern, right? So. Right, so we've got this nice little like da 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 da. Then you got that da 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 da. Nice and swing has a nice little like triple tie swing feel to it. Okay, so we're playing. So we can play that as another exercise. That will help us work again on that quality of sound and really, really think about what the muscles and stuff in the hands and fingers are really doing to be able to cre create those particular little uh, rhythms and rudiments and stuff, right? So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been very useful to you. Useful to you. If you have any questions, by all means, please, you know, leave a comment down below. Um, like the video, share the video if you find it useful. Um, if you think it'd be useful to some of your other friends and stuff, other drummers in the community. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing and hit that bell. Make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next lessons and stuff are going to come out, right? So I'll be posting these every single week along with my covers. Again, I appreciate all your support and everything. And if you have any questions, feel free to you know drop a comment down below. We'll see you next time.